Hey, it's Homo Guy Corning again today, and here's the uh, curvature board that I've been working on. If you saw the last video where I was having trouble with some of the laser engraving and carving, uh, you've probably seen this already. Uh, but here it is in Fusion. I modeled it uh, in 3D, and uh, of course this graphic is imported from uh, a download from Etsy.com. Uh, railroad crossing, who knows, I couldn't come up with anything better, you know. Um, the dots out here were actually uh, created along a path. And uh, then there were dots in these blank spaces too, and I just deleted the dots every five, um, uh, every set here, so that to break them up. And of course, we have the finishing holes and the starting holes, and it goes clockwise. So anyway, and then we have uh, holes for the number of games one from zero to seven. So what I did was I X projected it into a sketch. So let's go ahead and grab that. I'll hide that and we'll show this. So there's the sketch and that was exported as a DXF by just right clicking and uh, say export as DXF right there. Save as DXF. It was then loaded into ESTLCAM and this is where we're going to uh, generate uh, the g-code of course there we go. the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pick a 8 millimeter I'm sorry a 1 8 inch uh, end mill here for the drilling and we'll use an automatic function create objects automatically and we're going to change this to engrave. Whoops, engrave. So now anything that looks like a circle is going to be drilled. Everything else is going to be engraved. And go ahead and let that run. And poof. Almost poof. All right, that's done. So all these holes have been drilled. Uh, let's go ahead and delete the uh, inner and out outer lines here. We're going to readdress those separately. So we'll delete that. And then we're going to delete this. And then all of these items here, well, that's interesting, let's delete those too. Alright. We got rid of those. <clears throat> now let's go ahead and select this uh, internal set of lines here that needs to be lasered. Just like that. And we're going to switch that over to a uh, laser running at uh, 10 millimeters per second. Like that guy right there. But if we just do one pass on it, it's going to be <clears throat> very light and thin. So. Um, we can go ahead and tile that guy. There's a little trick that I came up with here that uh, works kind of nicely. We're going to tile that two by two, but then we're going to only offset the images by a quarter of a millimeter. So 0 0.25, tab, 0.25, tab, and uh, then we'll say cre confirm. And if we zoom in real far here, perhaps we can see it. You can see that it's actually creating four copies of it, a uh, quarter of a millimeter apart. So that'll bolden up those lines a little bit from the laser. Now we need to deal with, uh, oh, while we're here, let's go ahead and select this guy. Whoops, not that guy. Here we go. Let's go ahead and select these again because I'm going to be milling a pocket here uh, of three millimeters deep. So this should actually start um, at three millimeters. I did that actually in reverse. Um, you should set the starting depth and cut uh, of the uh, pattern before you tile it. If you do it after you tile it, um, I've experienced having trouble getting all of the cuts down to the correct 
start uh, starting depth. So make sure you do uh, all the settings first on the original image and then tile it after the fact. So now we'll go ahead and create the other parts. We'll grab a part and I'm going to use a larger end mill for this because otherwise it would take forever with a 1 8 inch end mill. So we'll use the quarter inch and we'll part this guy on the outside and then we will go ahead and add some uh, holding tabs. While we're on this guy, we want to make the tool path cut um, 20 millimeters. I've got 3 quarters inch a piece of oak and that should be sufficient for that. And while we're at it, we will make the holding tabs uh, 10 millimeters, that sounds good, so they're not coming all the way up to the top. <clears throat> and we could just as well do a little finishing pass on it. We use the same tool. And that's the quarter inch flat. And we'll just take a couple mils off. There. Likewise, then we're going to create a hole over here, or a pocket actually, on this inside piece. And the depth of that cut is going to be three millimeters. And we're going to pocket that. And we'll do the same thing with the finishing tool. Quarter inch flat. We'll do that a couple of mils. All right, that seems pretty good. One thing I want to make sure of is that I have a decent uh, overlap on this uh, pocketing thing, so we're not leaving uh, any ridges down there. Let's see what the overlap is on here. Uh, um, yeah, that should be okay. Let's do 25%, but that's overkill, but we'll do it anyway. And the pocketing strategy on this is just linear. I think it's all set to go. Let's see what it looks like once we... Uh, let's save it like it is. And we'll create the CNC file. And uh, needs a toolpath depth for the laser. We'll just say 0.1 millimeter. Oops. Unfortunately, this was an error. Uh, I had not set the depth of the uh, holes to be drilled, so this in effect set the depth for the laser engraving and all the holes to be drilled, so I ended up only drilling one millimeter uh, holes for the pegs, and it uh, should be a quarter of an inch. I ended up redoing this later, uh, totally redoing it, um, but uh, we'll continue for now. And what's our run time? Uh, two and a half hours. So it looks like it's going to uh, pocket that uh, very nicely with a lot of overlap. Let's make sure that we still have the four passes on here. On the laser, uh, it looks like we do. One, two, three, four. Good. We have to make sure that the laser portion of the job is after... Um, the pocketing. So it's going to use a 1 8 inch end mill and it's going to do the engraving and then it's going to go to the quarter inch. So we need to bring that quarter inch up front. So let's go back because it needs to pocket that before it laser engraves it. So we're going to grab this guy and this guy 
and we'll set his order to one. The first positive. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and generate again. Now, the tool change uh, coordinates flat. Tool change uh, end mill eighth inch. And then the very last thing will be the laser portion of it, the engraving down here. Tons and tons of engraving right after the drilling here. Here, tool change laser 10. That should be the last thing. Look all the, all the way to the bottom and it's still doing the engraving. So we should be good. All right. Let's give it a try. All right, it looks like that worked out okay. Keep vacuuming it off. I made the edges just a little bit wider on this one than the previous models. I'm going to use the handy little pumpkin carving jigsaw. They were routed uh, around the edges here. Uh, I'm going to do some sanding here, but these lines are fairly fine um, in the lasered area, and I think that's plenty smooth enough. Um, and last time I monkeyed with this, uh, I would start getting um, pine uh, dust in the grooves, and it's kind of hard to get back out. Um, kind of sticky a little bit. So before I start sanding, I'm actually just going to cover up the uh, lasered stuff here. All right. We're about ready to start finishing.